If you did not know already, the Cowboys Report does have an Instagram channel, or feed, whatever you want to call it, account. Go follow it at Cowboys Report IG. Lots of short form videos and uh, photos available on that platform. Give us a follow if you're on Instagram at Cowboys Report IG. Let's go to the latest now on Stephon Gilmore. The former Cowboys quarterback does still remain unsigned for we shall see how much longer. Ezekiel Elliott was set to wear number 21, then flipped to number 15. Much uh, speculation, really more hopes of Gilmore's going to sign. Doesn't appear to be related. Nothing imminent on that front, uh, according, according to multiple different Cowboys reporters, Michael Gelk, I think Todd Archer as well. So not related, but it doesn't mean it couldn't happen. Among the teams that have been linked either speculatively, maybe in Pittsburgh's case here, or more in depth, the Dallas Cowboys, of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Carolina Panthers, and the New England Patriots. Now, all four teams didn't take a corner at least super early. You know, Shaw Smith-Wade was drafted. Marcellus Dial was drafted by New England. Kalen Carson by Dallas. But nothing super early enough to say, ah, now we definitely don't need a corner. And Gilmore is on the back nine, or maybe the, the, the closing stretch even, of his NFL career. It's, this is a player who is not the same athlete he was at his absolute best. We, we can all acknowledge that and say he still played pretty well, uh, especially outside of that playoff game. And, and he battled through the, the, the shoulder injury. I do think the shoulder injury part of that angle is a factor in why he's still unsigned here at the beginning of May. The Cowboys cornerback room is fine if they didn't bring back Gilmore, but it would be better if they did, right? You have Trayvon Diggs, Ron Bland, Jordan Lewis, Kalen Carson. Those four guys are roster locks. That leaves anywhere from two to three, give or take, open roster spots. Maybe as few as one, but I think we'll count C.J. Goodwin uh, as a likely special team core contributor from that perspective. Maybe Mukwamu plays safety. So it is still a thinner cornerback room, especially with Diggs coming off of his ACL tear. Now, Diggs had that injury in September. He should be fine and good to go for week one. Sounds like rehab's gone well. We'll know more around minicamp, etc. I would like to bring Gilmore back. I would like to keep him. Of all the spots that, like, running it back make, made sense, I thought corner was the most obvious. And you're not paying Jordan Lewis very much money. It's like if you had to play him and bench him and play Diggs, Bland, and Gilmore, that, ah, you know, we're wasting $5 million on the bench. You're not even paying him that much. My fear, however is he will end up being a Carolina Panther. That door has been left open even more wide by Carolina. They only added Shaw Smith-Wade later on day three. I would not be surprised if, whether it's a days, weeks, or months, whatever, Gilmore ends up re-signing in Carolina. What do you think is the percent chance the Cowboys end up re-signing Stephon Gilmore? Low number, high number, it is the pinned comment on today's video. So if an ad comes on YouTube, go vote while that ad plays. Let's talk Trey Lance. As expected, the fifth-year option has been declined for the Cowboys' maybe number two quarterback this upcoming season. Now, I have seen surprisingly large amount of bad information out there on this. First off, this should surprise nobody. The only correct decision for the Dallas Cowboys was to decline that fifth-year option. Remember, the fifth-year option is for the next season, not this one. He was already on the books with a guaranteed salary. It was the, the, the roster bonus was due to be picked up. It was already guaranteed. It was a timing thing. Saw some bad info on that. The Cowboys couldn't decline it. I mean, they could, but they'd be paying not to have him still. That was the roster bonus earlier this offseason. Now it's the fifth-year bonus or, or option next year. That cost at a fully guaranteed, cannot be gotten out of even if cut, was $22 million. A massive figure that did not make any sense for the Cowboys to pick up. In fact, there was never any intent to pick up the fifth-year option. Just like all the other recent first-round picks that have been traded, Mac Jones, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Kenny Pickett to Philadelphia, there's zero intent by those organizations to pick up the fifth-year option because it doesn't make financial sense for a backup. You traded him because you wanted to see what he could do in this offseason. And we'll see that in a couple of months. 
Tyler Guyton rookie jerseys are available. Chatsports.com slash Guyton. Put that link in the comment section and the description of today's show. It is the Navy rookie jersey for the Cowboys first round pick. They are pre-order stage, so you got to be a little bit patient for them to uh, get delivered to you. They're not like, they're not being, they're, it takes them a little bit since they don't know who the pick is until after it happens. So pre-order stage, but get yours well in time for week one at chatsports.com slash guide. Let's talk to C.D. Lamb's status here. C.D. Lamb is very much looking for a new contract, as we all know by now. You got to love his teammate, Brandon Cooks, hyping him up. Here's what Cooks said on Lamb uh, at, at the uh, uh, Home Run Derby uh, charity event the other night for the Cowboys. The guy's a freak. He deserves everything that's coming his way. Hope he gets every single dollar that he can and be the highest paid receiver in the league because he's the greatest receiver in the league. No doubt. First off, find you a friend like Brandon Cooks who goes out of his way to hype you up and say this is the best receiver in the National Football League. Pay that man his money. That is, that's the type of teammate I think you always look, look to have in your wide receiver room. But back to what Cooks said. Would you make Lamb the highest paid wideout in the NFL? Y for yes, N for no. Go ahead and sound off for me in the comment section right now. Now, my answer is a no doubt yes, because that is what it will take. The, the, it's been made very clear by the Lamb camp. You don't hold out and skip you know, the voluntary stuff if you were fine waiting on deals. You would, they want it to get done sooner, while the Jones boys say they want to see more leaves fall. And if you don't want to make Lamb the highest paid wide receiver, okay, then trade him. That is what you should be doing. Move on. Because he's going to get it. So if you're not going to do it, then, then trade him. Right? The highest paid wide receiver room has already changed twice this offseason. In, in between the time the, the Cowboys said they want to see more leaves fall, two receivers got paid the highest amount in the NFL. A.J. Brown and Amon Ross St. Brown on a less fake deal than Tyreek Hill surpassed them. That is the new market. It's at minimum $32 million a year. If you had operated with urgency, maybe you could have got it done at about $30.75 million. By the way, both of those deals shorter on the years than what Dallas likes. And when you add years, you got to add money per year. About every year you add is worth about an extra $2 million with the way you're able to structure and backload contracts, by the way, folks. Though this is the market. Pay it or get paid by it. That's, that's how it operates. Guaranteed money, by the way, is going to be approaching $85 million a year. That's how it works. This, this is what the contract market looks like at wide receiver. And it's not going to slow down. Because Jamar Chase is going to get paid. Justin Jefferson is going to get paid. Brandon Ayuk might get in that ballpark too. The longer you wait, the more it costs. So when ownership sits up there and say... If you're upset with the rate it's going, it's because I'm not ready, quote from Jerry Jones. If the ownership says I, that they want to see more leaves fall, there's nobody else to blame. That's them saying they have been waiting. This is a mistake the Cowboys always make with these top-end players. If you want a player to be a part of your long-term core, there's zero reason to wait. If you don't think they're part of it, okay. But the Cowboys tend to try to win the deal, and when they don't win the deal immediately, they wait and wait and wait, and they will eventually pay C.D. Lamb. That deal will get done. It just might be the last wide receiver deal to get done in this cycle, and that could cost them $3 million per year, give or take. And that, that sucks, because it didn't have to be that way. We are 59 subs away from 188,000 subscribers here. What a big-time figure. Hit that sub button and help us get there sooner than later. Let's talk Traylon Burks trade. There has been buzz predictions that Traylon Burks will be moved by the Titans this summer, especially amid the, the interest in Tyler Boyd, and I would predict that he ends up signing there. And if they do sign Tyler Boyd, well, that would put the former first-round pick as wide receiver four on this roster. 
because they threw a bag at Calvin Ridley. They have Hopkins on the outside. I kind of think Burks maybe should get more run at slot as a big slot receiver with his play style. Uh, but if they add Tyler Boyd, who knows Brian Callahan, which is important to remember there, then Traylon Burks maybe is wide receiver four. So would you trade for Traylon Burks? I've got thoughts on this and his potential fit, but I want to hear from you guys in the comments section. T for trade, P for pass. Go ahead and sound off for me in the comments section of today's show. My issue with Burks is, although he was a mostly viewed as a first-round pick coming out of the 2022 NFL Draft, the, the production has been even worse than what I think most people thought it could be. Um, I did not have a first-round grade on Burks. I had a second-round grade on him. Still ended up being a little bit higher than probably what it should have been at this time. The concern I had was, hey, he's a big guy. He didn't test very well athletically, and that was a real red flag for teams. And he went from being, hey, this guy's meant to be maybe wide receiver one to, yeah, I know he ends up being wide receiver five for most people uh, in that draft. I think it was wide receiver six taken, by the way. My biggest issue is what this team needs, I believe, at wide receiver is more juice is more speed. And Burks does not offer that ability. Now, if I can get him for like a mid to late day three pick, I will gamble on that. Uh, and maybe he can be my wide receiver three and he can compete with Jalen Tolbert. That I would be fine with. But I also don't, move, don't, don't move a big time asset because that would just scare me given the lack of production so far in his NFL career.